one. What's up, Dave? How are you doing today? Good, Drew. How are you, buddy? Yeah, I'm hanging in there, dude. Hanging in there. Life's been crazy. Definitely a roller coaster. Uh, got into an accident, so that was fun. But but uh, other than that, man, just getting through those, jumping through those hurdles and making things happen. So I'm blessed. No one was hurt. I wasn't hurt. Car's replaceable. So that's all I can ask for. Yeah. Praise God. Thank God you're safe, dude. That's it, man. That's it. How about you, dude? How are you? Good. Good. Getting the, uh, getting the house, uh, settled. Um, seems like there's something to do there every single day and it just never ends, uh, which is good. And then, um, yeah, just been, been hustling with work, trying to get deals done. And, you know, I know we talked about last year, our focus coming into this year, at least my keyword was focus. So uh, I have been really trying to make that apparent every day coming into work, just like focus, 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 get things done. Uh, don't waste time. So it's been, I, I've been getting a lot done, but I feel like, you know, every day when I go home, like I, I'm pretty tired because just the whole day I've been going, you know, so and it's been a good start to the year. Good start. Couldn't ask for anything, anything more. So I love it. I love it. And I had to, I have to ask because I saw on Kaya's Facebook or instagram something she posted pictures and it was of a sink and one side had a silver faucet and the other side had a black faucet so my question is was that a before and after or are they two separate sinks in your house one has a silver and one has a black no it's a before and after dude yeah. it looks clean bro clean yeah dude we gotta have you over soon i After just Honestly, the only thing that's like hindering me from bringing people over is there's no couch. So like people could cut and we don't have dining chairs. So like we have everything else, but like a place for people to sit. And it's like, I'm not going to have people over if they can't sit down. I'll bring a foldable chair. Just whip it out. Dude. Yeah. Just freaking whip Jeez. out the camping chairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, man. <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm super proud of Kaya. She's like, she's just taking it by the horns and like, she's done pretty much all the work at the house. Her, her grandpa, my dad, uh, my uncles helped out. So like, we've had a lot of help so far, um, but there's just like, she has a lot of great ideas, but it takes like a lot of work to accomplish that, you know? So like, we've been doing fixtures, lights, uh, faucets, hardware, um, and then, you know, obviously moving into a new house as a young person, you have no furniture. So like everything that you get, like it gets mailed in a box, you got to build it, put it together. So it's just a process, but it, it's good. It's been, it's been fun. I can't wait to have you and Danny over. Absolutely, dude. It'll be a blast. And we're so excited. We're waiting. Cause I, I, all the pictures that I've seen, it looks like a gorgeous house. So I'm really excited to, to come on over and check it out. So yeah, it is, bro. It's, it's beautiful, but um, yeah, we'll do that soon. Otherwise, we'll get started with today's episode, Drew. I want to give you majority of the time. So if you don't mind, I'll just kind of hop into Tucson's market. Do it. Run for it. Sweet. So I'm going over, this is actually within the MLS. So I'm using a different software. It's 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 pulling from the same, but it's just like a, a more active software than what I was using before. So I'm hoping it'll give us some more realistic numbers. Um, this is the market summary for December of 2023 in Tucson, Arizona. So they had 2,170 active listings and 579 sold homes. Uh, listing prices sold for a median sale price of $335,700. And the active median list price was $379,000. Uh, so a pretty drastic difference there. Um, the absorption rate for December was 2.69, which again is well below the four, uh, actually half of the four pretty much. So tells me it's really still a good seller's market uh, in Tucson. And as far as the days on market, it was an average of 40 days uh, of everything on, on market. So still relatively a strong, healthy seller's market. And I don't think that's going to change as we head into the summer months. Love to hear it. That's amazing. And I, I agree. I mean, I think from everything that I've seen, you know, from my standpoint as an advisor, kind of having to keep an eye, a watchful eye over the housing market as a whole, you know, I think that the our systems and things that we see are kind of indicating the same thing of, you know, strong housing market, interest rates, even if there is a fluctuation, it will only increase housing prices. 
and you know, but it's a pretty strong, stable. We hit a new mark, but it's flatlined, and it's it's got what we would call in our industry a strong floor. So there's not really, it's not going to go below that. So. Right, right. That's fair. That's fair. Love that. Well, for me, I am not even going to run over my indices again. Uh, I think I want to give it like a little bit longer to brew and to give because right now, I mean, into the new year, the markets have been kind of down and kind of wonky. And so I want to, typically that happens, you know, you get a ton of spending during the holiday season because people are buying gifts and they're spend, spreading love and joy. And so there's a lot of money being passed. So things happen. But then as things start to slow, when we get into the new year, because people are tightening up their budgets, or they're not spending as much because there's no need, you know, you start to fall into the, oh, no, the stock market's kind of falling and crumbling a little bit. And that's more of just a pattern that we see on a regular basis. So I don't really want to, to scare anybody and be like, oh, the market's down. And it's not down dramatically, but it is down. And so, um, you know, give that a little bit of time to reacclimate and and re sort of set her down, excuse me, level out yeah. and, and create that floor again. But uh I think that we had talked about a little bit, you know, the, the main focus that I wanted to hit on today was my speaking engagement and really just talking about, so I was at a, an event today and I was one of the speakers, there was four of us and I learned a lot of information and I was able to share a lot of information, but some of the things that I talked about or some of the things I was listening to uh, regarding some new laws that are coming out from the tax professional side of things, as well as uh, some business building made me think that it would probably be important to share since majority of our database are small business owners and realtors who are essentially small business owners. Uh, it, it's important to share a little bit of the information. And so we were talking about rental properties and should you put each of them in their own LLC and then have an umbrella LLC. And we were talking about, should you file as an S corp or a PLLC and when those sorts of things happen, like what's the tipping point? When does it look good and fit your situation? And, you know, should you put an LLC in Wyoming and keep yourself at anim keep the animosity, animosity, no anonymity, anonymity, that's the word of like, so that people don't know who you are and who owns it, you know? And so when I was listening to all of these things, it really showed me that there is a super important need for people to sit down with a business attorney to help with the organization and structuring. Because even the idea of what I'm going through right now is a whole lot harder than I thought. So I've got mm -hmm. a rental property and I have an LLC and I'm in the process of changing everything from the name, my name to the name of the LLC. But what I didn't realize until today was that I can deed it and I can have my property management company, shout out Suburban, uh, actually that can change everything logistically there. But what I didn't take into account was that Drew Karcheski himself took out the loan for the property, not Karcheski Properties. And so I have to redeed the loan. I have to restructure the loan to fit in that sense. And so like, is it worth the thing to actually make that movement over? And so I think when you're looking at it from a very high level thinking perspective uh, and you're like, okay, how do I best structure myself and set myself up? A CPA is going to do their job and a financial advisor is going to do his to help with those types of things. But the questions about actual articles of incorporations and the structuring of these businesses, it is super important to reach out. So if you want to ask me for a contact or who you should reach out from, I have one from today's speaking, uh, but it definitely left me thinking to myself, man, more people should be having these conversations and it's conversations that stink and they're not fun to have and they kind of are expensive. But they will save you in the long run if you get sued or when you're filing taxes because it will eliminate all of the questions for, you know, audits as well as, you know, making sure that your estate is appropriately handled and all of the problem and being sued. You'll get all of that kind of taken care of. So 
Yeah, that's my that, thoughts. That's a really good point. And not only that too, if you deed your product, because like my triplex is in a, uh, it's in an LLC. Um, however, my name's on the loan, right? So, um, you know, not only do you have to have, uh, if you change or deed the property into the name of your LLC, not only that, but then you also have to triple check your insurance because if the insurance is in your name and you make a claim and the property is deeded, you know, uh, in the LLC, you could run into an issue where the insurance company won't give you money for a claim you make because the insurance is in your personal name, but the property is deeded into the name of the LLC. So they might, they could give you potentially not give you any money. Right. So like, there are so many nuances that like when you're dealing with rental property specifically and even your own business, right? These, all these entities, you have to, I, I, I agree hundred percent. You have to consult with an attorney and your CPA and your insurance guys and your property management teams. Like you have to consult and ask all of these questions to ensure for a fact that you are protected in the case that like Drew, you're in a car accident. What's to say like, thank God, but what's to say you didn't like pass away during that. Yeah. And then like, you know, you didn't set up your, you know, rental property uh, correctly. And now it's like going to the state or whatever, when like Absolutely. your parents could have benefited from that. Right. And so you just want to make sure you set things up correctly. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time and headache, but it's absolutely necessary if you're going to succeed long-term. Absolutely. I completely agree. And I think that that shed a lot of light because I feel like I'm very smart when it comes to that. But I like these little nuances are exactly that. And I've seen it time and time again of things that are mishandled or not even mishandled, but just looked overlooked because they're just so easy to miss. Like who would have thought to go back and check and make sure that your insurance is appropriately owned? Not me, but now I know, you know, so right. And it's sketchy, dude, because what's, you know, you get a flood in your house and then you call it, you make a claim and they're like, well, you know, you forgot you deeded it correctly in your LLC, but little did you forget you didn't freaking deed it, you know, uh, change it into your insurance. So Absolutely. it's like, it, it's stuff like that, you know, and then, um, yeah. And then specifically regarding like the mortgages on the property, that's something to really triple check with the lender themselves. Because sometimes you may sign a loan, you may buy a property, but then that loan gets sold. So now you're dealing with a new carrier you never realized, right? So you have to make sure you're talking to the one who's servicing and owns that loan, right? Over the person who wrote your loan, because it could be someone completely different. So, you know, that's just stuff to really, really consider to make sure you're aware of because, yeah, I mean, it, you, you'd rather be, you know, safe than sorry type of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I completely echo that. So if you have questions about any of that property management, real estate rentals, and you want some advice from people that have done it, reach out to Kate and I, we both are, uh, we've done it. And then if you actually have questions that are specific about your business and what you should do in the establishment, I have resources. I'm sure Kate has resources as well. So feel free to reach out and we can definitely make the introduction for you. Absolutely. would be happy to help. So awesome. Well, sweet. Well, this is our plug for what we always do for what we do this for. Uh, our next NGRN will be on the 26th of January. So not this Friday, like tomorrow, not next Friday, but the Friday after that. Uh, we do have speaker Carlos Albalis from Wow Real Estate. Super excited. One thing about him is he actually named it WOW because he prides himself on giving WOW service. So I love that. Uh, and I want to make sure that, he, you know, people know who he is. He's really awesome and he's very knowledgeable and he's very good at just sharing what it is that he uh, that he knows and how he built his business, but also specifics about the industry and what's going on. So uh, 530, Arizona Sands Club, same as usual. And yeah. I think that's, that's everything. And we always like to end on a positive quote. Kate, do you have one? I don't. I not do. off the top of my head. but I, I do. One. I got one. Oh, you got one? Perfect. Yes, What's sir. That? So the quote is, the most important thing is to try, oops, is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they want to do. Ooh. That's awesome. So 
wanting to make sure that we are inspiring each other. So that way I'm a financial professional. Kate says, Drew, you're doing amazing. I want to inspire you to do better, which happens all the time, by the way. He, uh, he does inspire me all the time. And so it makes me a better professional knowing that I have his consistent support. So I think that this network is that very good at doing that. So if you want to be a part of a network that wants to see you succeed and pass and, and do amazing things, this is the place to be for sure. Yes, sir. Iron sharpens iron. That's you it. know, it's, it's amazing to me that the people who show up to our meetups are typically the same people every time. Yeah. Why? It tells me that they want to grow their networks, their sphere, their education, their influence. They are looking to grow. And so that's why you don't see a lot of turnover because once they show up and they realize the value, they realize the network, they realize, you know, what they have the ability to tap into, uh, it's worth them continuing to come. So we encourage you guys come to the meetups. We have some crazy speakers coming out this year lined up. Drew's done a phenomenal job getting these guys uh, scheduled. Uh, so do yourself a favor, come meet these people who are in positions that you want to be in. That's it. Get around people who are in position you want to be in and they will bring you up. So, um, but otherwise, we will see you guys probably next week via call, but hopefully it. in person on the 26th. That's it. Looking forward to it. As always, take care and Cade, we'll see you next week. Sounds good, brother. See you then.